Hey, man, we here, man. We back for another installment of the Wash Your Back podcast, man. It is I, Phil Mo Mike, and this bad boy. Don't forget, you can watch us on YouTube, of course, like you're doing right now. You can also download that iHeartRadio app, tap in with us anytime you want to, man, via the iHeartRadio app. If you can't get the visual, you can always get the audio there. We got a very special guest in the building. Uh, sure. Special for more reasons than one. I've been knowing this man since I was five. First minute when I was yeah. five years old. Big shout out to I just, I just, I just told him about that. In the car, I was like, I've been knowing Mike since I was six years old. Exactly, bro. man. So shout out to Big Rich. What up, brother? How you doing? And we got his his wife in the building. Yeah. Miss Danielle. Hey. Okay, let me know, man. Cause you know, a lot of times people come inside and everybody want to interview Big Rich, but you know, it's it's a team. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Teamwork yeah. make the dream work. You yeah. feel me? Uh so you know, every time people come here, she been here before Danielle. Mm-hmm. She mm-hmm. she she knows the drill, you know. Right. <laughs> you just gotta you just gotta wash your back. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Rich? It's so, mad. You know, I didn't realize, man, until you until you started saying it a while ago, I was like, I didn't realize a lot of people do not wash their back, bro. So, you know, it's very <laughs> important. I learned that as a youngster because I definitely probably when we met, I probably wasn't washing my back yet. And then I was right. like, man, like I got like eight, nine after we shooting hoops all day. Yeah. I had to start washing my damn straight, back. Man. Straight you know? up, man. Yeah. Let know. So I'm glad to know you wash your back, Daniel. Yo, you wash your back? Absolutely. For sure, for sure. Yeah. It's all it's mandatory that it we is. ask that question in Absolutely. Here, so, <laughs> Absolutely. What's up, Rich, man? What's How up, you been, bro? man? Been good, bro. Richard Borgier. He's yes. call yeah. me Michael downstairs. <laughs> Michael Fontella. What's yeah, exactly. up, bro? Exactly. Man, you know. Yeah. Nah, we've been good, bro. Just grinding, just just establishing um, the vision that we've been that we've been pursuing for about a decade now, and, it, and it's starting to come together pretty good. So we happy, we blessed, you so know. I had I was here with Troy, yeah, and I asked him like, okay, cause I remember Project Level, yeah, and it kind of like morphed into ten fifteen, but it's not the same, yeah. So it help explain you two. T- they hop up in here, man. You want to be scared? Yeah, yeah, don't be scared. I mean, yeah, no. So Project I know you're not scared. Excuse me. Oh yeah, <laughs> I, I'm not scared, but no. yeah, I'm normally the quiet one. Um, so yeah, Project Level started as a youth organization. It still is, and it's still we were, going. It's still going. Got we're you. On got like you. Thirteen. Yeah. Going on thirteen years. No, no, year twelve. Year twelve. And twenty four. And twenty four. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Year yeah. twelve. Beautiful. Um, we're it's, we're doing well. Got great partnerships, but we discovered that like you know as people were growing and they were going down their own path, it was like they they still needed help, and it was yeah. like okay, we can help you. But it would have to be something separate from project level. And plus, they, like, age out. So they're not technically in our program anymore. And so we were like, let's just build 1015. Because we always had some format of, like, a collective where we always support people if it was, like, through marketing or whatever. So it's like, we're going to start our management group. Got you. And we just decided to make a separate entity. So the project level kind of, like, you kind of, like, you you build budding artists, Mm -hmm. uh, creators exactly. uh, yeah. actors mm-hmm. artists mm-hmm. and then from there you take them to 1015 and then you just push them and promote them as a management team yeah yeah it's like um That's project it. level is like the incubator you right. know what i'm saying where right. we where they're able they're able to go through all of the um and and it's a lot of resources for at project level right so mm-hmm. the support system is there and the nurturing for the artists and stuff is there and they can take their time or they can Got you know you. speed it up go whatever whatever speed that they want and then once they get to 1015, it's like they, they already they trained, they season, they understand. Um, they're able to like kind of create a little buzz for themselves through project level during that time. So by the time we, you know, they're ready, then we kind of already know it's it's good. So I think that's probably what helps our success with a lot of them. Like Jasmine. Right. You know what I mean? Like she was she she had over a hundred K followers and stuff, and she was able she to was. build a lot of that during her time at right. Project Level. So then now, like, she just dropped a campaign with, with Puma and Fenty to Man. what yesterday? Yeah, I think or the other day. So yeah, she's been doing it for. She been doing it for. She been. She was your first. Yeah, yeah. She's like our first real success story. I seen that you, 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 you you gave it up to her. Right, right. It was basically like, man, if it wasn't for you, yeah, yeah, you kind of like kicked the door down and was like, you guys are serious. Absolutely, because because really. Her and Bianca, our, our middle child, mm-hmm. and BB, but well, BB was ours. So it was like it was expected in some ways because we was going to put a lot of effort and resources behind it. But like Jasmine was like the first that wasn't our actual child or wasn't directly in our family like mm-hmm. that to really take off. And that's kind of been a catalyst of what we're doing. You know? Okay. Okay. So you got in the, uh, I see you got in the fashion, bro. Yeah. 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 Mogul. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely, yeah. bro. Um, the whole, you know, I think I think we try to we try to like build this this ecosystem, right? Like as far as like um 
an industry within the industry, right? Like to, be, to especially when we took on like creators and 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 different people outside of music, it was kind of a new challenge for us. So I feel, you know, doing the, um, turn on that fan real quick. Oh yeah, a it's bit. a little hot. Yeah, up in this it thing, get right? hot. Yeah. But uh, we was, you know, when, when we when we tackled that other world. We started, you know, they was getting booked for different kind of fashion events and different things like that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we from Filmo, so we always knew how to dress. You Definitely. know what I mean? And, oh, my and, God. <laughs> so it was like we always, we was always in tune with it. But we wanted to start a brand that that matched what we were actually doing, right? right. So it was like if people are really buying into what we're doing at 1015 and, and Project Level and building businesses and stuff, they are junior moguls or moguls in training, and it just mm-hmm. fit. It just made sense. So right. it wasn't like we didn't want to jump off the cliff and just do something totally different. Everything kind of coincide with each other, mm-hmm. and it, 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 I think that helps with the success as well. You know what I'm saying? Because it, it all relates. You Man. know what I mean? So it makes sense. So. Bro, y- y'all killing the game because it's like you got the uh – I mean, you, you commented on my comment. I, I forgot to wear the sweater, but I can't be wearing things. That was hard. Oh, that yeah. was hard. I looked up. I, I was like, randomly. okay, okay. You yeah, he, had the, he yeah. had the ambitious sweater for yeah, the, exactly. with the Fever 21 The Fever yeah. 21, and yeah. y'all got Puma. Yeah, You yeah. got the Nikes. We did the Nike. Yeah, we did. Um, you didn't bring E. McGee no uh, Pumas? What's no, up, I got you, though. I got you. <laughs> I'm joking, Just need your size. I got I'm you. Joking, got I'm you. joking. I'm joking. But now, that, that's that been a blessing, too. We, we ended up... Um, Doing a situation with Shoe Palace where we kind of take over creative direction in this region, you know what I'm saying? And oh wow, yeah, yeah, they they gave they gave us that, and so we, you know, our first campaign. Well, we did we did a bunch of stuff with them, and we of course with Project Level we do big shoe givebacks every year with them and stuff like that already. And um, the relationship with John and Elijah and everybody else, I've been going back since the rapper days. Mm-hmm. But once we started Project Level, they saw they saw a way to really get involved and help us with that. Gotcha. And then that when once they saw that, they saw how creative the team was. And then they started giving us little opportunities to show our stuff. And Sick. Jordy then done some campaigns with them. We had um, some of our former, you know, our former talent had did some stuff with them. And then the Nike one was like, yo. We got 23 hours to turn this around. So we wow. had to shoot it, do the whole treatment, get all everything together. That's why it was even, there's a lot of people that's mad too. I, I get some crazy DMs, but we didn't have enough time. <laughs> no, like we, no, 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 the, the, right. this is crazy. You I know what I'm saying? And I'm like, I'm like, first of all, you know, like even the song, I'm like, it's my song. You know, I'm going to put my song in there. Exactly. Like, and then all, but it was really, you know, cause this is the world premiere. We never get a chance to talk about it, but we didn't have time for clearances and all that. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? Like, we, if we want to go, you know, split it up and get some E-40 songs, we have to go through all kind of legal stuff. We had 23 hours to flip that. Wow. And, and it turned out to be an epic. We we sold out Nike.com in, in a couple of hours. Like, the shoes was gone. That's you know what I mean? So, it was a good look. So, it, it, it seemed like, like you're a conductor of, like, you connect the dots. Yeah. Like, yeah. they see it. They're mm-hmm. like, man, let's highlight a big rich to, and, and Daniel to do it. Uh, yeah. 10, 15. I think we always talk about that as far as, like, visionary stuff and just different things and just 30 years of doing this since we was kids, right? Like, since I was a youngster, I always, like, just paid attention man. to that. And then Danielle is, is the architect. She's the one that none of this will, like, even matter. All my ideas and shit, and uh, can I cut it? I don't even know. All my ideas wouldn't even matter if, if she wasn't able to go put them together and compose them. Right. Into what we create, right? So, so I, I think a lot. She thinks a lot, but then she's able to put the stuff together. You, so I call her the architect. Do you know what's crazy? I be sitting in the Wash It Back podcast. If y'all want to sponsor and hook uh-huh. us up, and you know whatever you want to do, we sponsor people and all that good stuff. We got commercials cracking. We gonna get it cracking. Shout out to uh, my guy Christian. But listen, yes, sir. You see how Big Rich answered that question? <laughs> I don't even have to ask them. Yeah, 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 he yeah. told me I was gonna be like, man. So how did Project Love start? Yeah, 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 yeah. He already got into it, man. So he's a very well seasoned veteran. Definitely, bro. One thing, Big Rich. I'm gonna get into some funny yeah, stuff real yeah. quick. Big Rich was one of the first rappers in the Bay with a, with a chain. Swear right, to right, God. Right, right, Swear to God, right. like, You had <laughs> right. a real chain, yeah, too. Yeah, that yeah, yeah, yeah. small <laughs> stuff. <laughs> yeah, it, it was like we had to make a statement. I feel I feel like even that, even at that time, I'll be telling our artists now, like, that was even strategic, right? Like I feel I know like it was. we come in, we we like a lot of people, you know, and especially at that time, and you you was done deal with us. Yeah. So coming out of the done deal situation and and it was like you YB. wanted to show, yeah, it, that it's it, real. It had to be something, right? Because it's like YB and, and Quinn and the whole team was already they was already established. Right. And then coming out, me and Chuck doing the whole street cred movement, and then having that's the business on MTV. Mm-hmm. It kind of came out of left field in a way. So a right. lot of people like, okay, he, 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 but where did he come from? You right. know, like you knew and, and people here knew, but everybody else didn't know. So it was mandatory that we had to make a statement. Like yeah. I'm like, we can't just go get, you know, jewelry is a part of our culture too, but I'm like, right. we got to go get something big. So right. 
So Alex over there, you know, Highland, I went up, yeah. ooh, ooh, Alex over at Exotic Custom. <laughs> Shout out to Alex. I heard he down yeah. in Texas now. I haven't seen him in like a decade, but he, he put it together, man. Yeah, it's still that's here. This is up, 18 man. years old. This man. Is a, this chain is grown Go now. crazy. You put it in the camera right there. Really? Let them see it. <laughs> Straight up, man. From the, what LeRon say, from the struggle to the bubble. To man. the bubble, man. <laughs> <laughs> to the bubble, man. man you but know yeah. what I love about y'all, though, for real? When Kayla was here. Yeah. And I, I, I know it's not like a female or male thing. Right, right, but right. But when Kayla was here, yeah. you came. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You was the representation. You mm-hmm. feel me? Just talk about that, just being in this game, yeah. not having a lot of like, in the Bay, it's not a lot of female managers. No, definitely. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. It's a lot of female bosses, but not a lot of managers. Right. Can you just talk about that and as far as your role with Kayla yeah. and any other artists you got a special connection with besides right. your brother and stuff? Now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. So... Yeah, I'm Kayla's lead manager. Got you. Um, so she prefers to have an all-female team. Like, that is her support. Like, of course, it's, it's Rich and G-Val, too. Like, we, we're doing this together. Right. But, you know, like, when we're hitting the road and all that, she just, you know, she's a woman. Right. And she needs, she needs that energy from another woman. So it's like... Yeah. That's what I like bring to the table, Beautiful. and so it's you know it's been amazing working with her, like getting to know her. You know, she started off in Project Level too. Yeah. So wow! Was like mm-hmm. yeah, she her first mm-hmm. ever performance was in Project Level, so wow. that's how yep. our relationship began. Gotcha. And just you know watching her grow, and then just knowing her as a woman, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Not as a kid, as a woman is just a fascinating like process and journey. Right. And so yeah, but like but being a female boss, a, a female manager. It's it's great. I mean, I love it. It's a little hard, though, because, you know, the Bay is so, like, pimpish, right? Like, mm-hmm. it's the... It's that like pimp culture. It's that the pimp ism. culture, yeah. yeah. So it's like some men will not speak to me, right? But I'm like, I really don't care. Like, you know, right. like I came to do business. Like, right. I get it. Like, it's a respect thing on one level, but on, the, on some other levels, it's then it's like also people, a disrespect thing on another level because like I ain't finna deal with this woman who was right. like, where the where the dude at? Like, you know right. what I'm saying? Like, I, it, it was a person we gonna remain nameless, but he kind of did that to her recently, and I, you know. I like to play off of that, though, because I know how important Danielle is to, to what we created. Mm-hmm. And I, I I like to play off of that. So I, I literally, if he think he's going to have to go around her, if he think he can go around her to get to me, I just, right. I ghost dude, that type right. of stuff, right? right. Cause, right. We gonna conduct business the proper way, right. you know and what I'm saying? It's us, we the duo, right? right? Like it's we, it's our tandem that really brings everything together. So some artists, like I'm front, like the like the number one seat, or I'm number two, right? But it's cool because that's how we do it. So like you know, I'm also on Neff's team, yeah, Taliban's team, um, a few others a few we can't announce, going yeah, crazy. yeah, Tally yeah, going yeah. Crazy. he is. Tally going crazy. Tell Neff that his beats. He could pick pick beats with Jeez, the best yeah. of them. Nah, he no, got, he got sure. it. <laughs> he got his it samples here. was going. Man, he got it real, here. Right. Now he's a real, we always knew he was good, but like being able to work with him over this past year or so, like just seeing his, how he work in the studio is is amazing. And yeah. and Tally is like a young phenom. Taliban right. is like he just cracking the surface yeah. on what he's finna do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like. And I think it shows. He ain't got ten thousand followers yet, right? Yeah. And, it, and, and, and like, right. but like, but like, but like his buzz. Like I remember, it's crazy. When, it's crazy. Mm-hmm. Everybody is playing his music. It's like his streams is crazy, but he only got six thousand followers. So, right. so it, when it when when the numbers start matching, it's gonna be a good look. Heck you know yeah. what I mean? So we are excited about Tyler. Real sure. quick, so you, everybody know Big Rich is a rapper. Mm-hmm. Big Rich Product PR, BR, PR <laughs> Big Rich uh, right. Productions, but being <laughs> in his corner. <clears throat> Did that kind of help you and prep you to be kind of like a role manager and mm-hmm. a manager? Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, because when I met Rich, like, of course, we were just dating. Like, that was it. And I remember. Yeah, yeah. All right. It was, was, it was it? day one, okay. day one, right. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, like, I had I had aspirations to be an artist. Oh, okay. But, you know. Let me know. <laughs> Exclusive. Yeah. yeah. Danielle, I, Danielle can sing. Yeah. Okay. But you're, I'm not going to, so we're not going to do that right now. She is but, you, can, you, can, you can do a wash your back jingle. Okay. Yes, <laughs> wash your dirty ass back. <laughs> but no, so, it, you know, like, I was just there. I wanted to be a support, you know, to him. And I just like, okay, so what are we doing? Like, I'm just excited. I get excited about stuff. Mm-hmm. So when he brought me in for, like, the first meeting, I'm like, I made binders for everybody. Yeah, and I was in. just like, I just wanted to help. I didn't want to do anything but just be a support to my man. But then it was just like, I was a part of his every day. Mm-hmm. So at that point, I'm like, 
okay, I'm just stepping into roles. I'm like, okay, we need to do this. We need to do that. That's when I learned the game. Right. And I learned it from him. And then I just, I was reading books and stuff. Like, yeah. I was trying to get all the so. knowledge I can because I'm like, I want to see him be successful. Right. Whatever it takes, I'm going to be that. So, yeah, like, always being by his side, like, he's taught me so much. And then he's like my biggest, like, supporter. He's that's my biggest up. cheerleader. Like, He's like, and that's you a need beautiful to step thing. to the front. He's like, step to the front, be seen, be heard, do right. what you need to do, like, stand on business. So nah, he's been right. really pushing it, and I, like, really appreciate how he's always held me down nah, and not real. make me, like, his secretary yeah. or you have to stay at home because right. you, you don't belong here. Like, I was the only one on the road. Nah, the only wife on the right. road, like, you know, right. yeah, all big. the other shit that was happening, like, <laughs> lip sealed. I learned here. how to do, do this. Like, right. stay in my lane. But I was also, like, a support to a lot of people. So, yeah. and, that's, and that's very commendable, bro, because mm -hmm. in our community, in Filmo, like she said earlier, oh, it's a yeah. pimp culture. Yeah. But to see y'all doing y'all thing. Yeah. And I wanted to get both of y'all on here right. for that no, reason. No, Mike, you really, you set that yeah. out the jump. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, like I want to get both of y'all on here. Because you guys are a power couple. It's like right. nobody like you guys right. damn near nowhere. Right. <laughs> Nah, thank <laughs> and that you, bro. needs to be recognized. And also, uh -huh. for you champion your wife, your right. female, you're an example. Yeah. Right. You know, you younger, Absolutely. you yeah, think yeah. that it's cool mm -hmm. to play females. Right, right. Like, as you get older, it's, like, the, it's real life, real man. Real talk. I remember, I remember um, when, we first, when we first got together, like, she was, like, coming with, with me out the gate. So, like, I remember she was talking about a meeting that we had at Koch in mm -hmm. New York that she... Um, Shot the D. She wasn't even supposed to be in the room, and she came in the room, and then... Um, me, me and Chuck was meeting with their team, D and Shadow and, and mm -hmm. um, Alan Grumblatt. And then she said, she, she, we was trying to figure out the marketing plan. And then she had a whole plan set up. And we was struggling with, because we was trying to get more money out of them for the marketing. Mm -hmm. And then she, she blurted out something. And then Alan stopped the meeting like, I like, I, I still don't even remember what the hell you said. But it was something that made him execute the budget immediately. Like, mm -hmm. it, the meeting was over. It was like, let's go. It's good. And I was like, okay, yeah. Like, you know, I knew I you knew that. Knew. But even before that, um, I remember I used to just, i go, you know, film. I, I roll through film. I ain't going to mm -hmm. say names and stuff like that. But 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 cats used to be like, bro, what you doing? Like, why you always got the, this new chick around? Like, who, like, what are you, <laughs> like, what are you doing? I'm like, bro, watch, bro. This right. ain't just a relationship. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's I used deeper. to say that. And Chuck could be, I think Chuck is probably the earliest witness to that. Because we, like, he understood. He like, okay. He 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 didn't like it because, you know, we, we from Filmo. And, right. And that wifey shit is, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like, no, we, it's pimping. You know what I yeah, mean? It's right right pimping. So they didn't understand. But he he was like, okay, he trusted it and right. he allowed it and, and, and it and it worked out. But we had this meeting. I remember we went, um, the you and that booty video shoot for um for, uh, for 40. forty yeah we we I was down there and she flew in and then we just had a meeting and I was just like just I want you around it just be around it. and at that time that was like at, with the hyphy movement at its height and this is the Man. icon of the hyphy movement I felt like this is exposing her to this to this environment would mm -hmm. be like great learning right? Right, right and then we sat down and we talked and this is when she still wanted to like pursue singing mm -hmm. and I'm like. You ready for this though? Like this is a, you know what I mean? Like I always say, I don't want to say the word on, on publicly, but I use a terminology about being an artist. You got to really be ready to go out there and and show out on a level that, in some way, it can be it can be degrading in some ways on what they put us artists through. You know what I mean? Like how you got to freestyle on. Like if you look at it, like me being a CEO and a boss and 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 having my paper up and stuff like right. some of the stuff I had to do to get here is crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like some of the the shambo type shit. You know right, what I'm saying? Right, right. And I'm asking her like, "Is you ready for that? Because it's gonna be grueling." You know what I mean? And then we talked. We had a long talk that night. And then I was like, "Look, if you if you if you help me, I promise in return. Number one, I'm not gonna quit. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna keep doing this shit. You ain't gonna waste your time with me." But then also we gonna we gonna split this shit down the middle. We are gonna That's do it together. Up. So like the plan was set from day one. So Beautiful. so eighteen years later to see it really you know come into fruition is, is crazy. That you know is. what I'm saying? Because it don't always work out like that. For you sure. know what I mean? So That's for real, big. for real. So yeah. What does uh mogul mean to you? Um, mogul mogul is a lifestyle. Mogul is like motivation. I feel like everybody you know entrepreneurship in the last you know ten years has became trendy it yeah. was it wasn't something that people cared about before but now it's a trend and i feel like mogul is like that 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 epitome that a hustler wants to get to right like i feel it's like instead of just being like okay i'm a hustler because now shit is in reverse we was drug dealers in our era and then now right. the rappers is, is drug users right, right? right. <laughs> so you know what i'm saying so when you look at that it's like 
I always want to set the bar higher, not mm-hmm. lower. We're not going backwards. We're going forward. Mm-hmm. And I feel like Mogul was the epitome of every hustler. Like right. we we gonna monopolize and enterprise and get this shit going. And and it's elite. It's an elite level. It's not just anybody can't attain that. You got to really work your ass off and really make smart moves mentally and physically right. and spiritually too. It's a That's lot. Sure. You know what I mean? Because. Yeah. CEOs don't go to heaven, man. We got to make we got to make just shit. tough decisions out here that is, that affect a lot of people. You know what I'm saying? Right. I mean, we going to heaven though, but you get what I'm saying. Right, you know what I mean? Right. Like it, it's hard. It's hard. It's a hard job. So struggling with that, but mogul is just the elite level of this lifestyle and, and and really taking you know taking it on your shoulders and taking care of your family your team and everybody and getting you to that stature so shoot for the top bro you is know it, what I mean? is it is it easier being a rapper or a a business uh is it easier to, to, to just do you and control yourself right or is it is it more pressure to kind of because you got now nah, it's a headache being artists. a manager bro okay, it's, a, yeah, head, it's, it's a headache it's a selfless job you yep. know what i'm saying but i think what we love though about it, and I let her tell her side of that, but like I always say, I try to, I try to give artists what I wanted, right? Like, like wow. Chuck, like Chuck, Chuck really like set the bar high for us at Dundee. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like it was like we 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 you didn't moved even realize what you had almost. at all, and it was like you know it was funny, and I did because I used to stay with him, but I still didn't understand until I became in his position, right? I'm like. Yo, dude really had to set up with stuff that the average people around us didn't have. Like, nice. you know what I mean? Like we we moved like a like a major label at that time when I didn't even Dang. understand what a major label was. So moving into into what we do in that 1015 and Project Love was like everything that I lacked or everything that I wanted or everything that I actually received, mm-hmm. I want that for our artists. And we start there. And then we trim from there mm-hmm. or we go up. You know what I mean? It all depends. But we start at figuring out what they need and what they want. And then that that um that transfer like I think one thing they say like you can go to ten fifteen and you kind of like they know how to build you into a star in a way right mm-hmm. and that package and I learned that young I learned that through Dundee and Chuck and every and Quinn and everybody how to mm-hmm. be a star so we like to imp- implement that into our crew you know what I'm saying so yeah. what's I your mean, what's your reason um I love helping people like so it's I, in you yeah it's in me I you. you know like I'm just naturally a giver a nurturer um. And it's so hard to just be just a manager. Like I right. can't be. Cause yeah. It's, it's like you're you're you work with people, and they're human. Like t- like artists, actors, models. They're humans at the end of the day, and they have to put on their cape, their mask to get on the stage and do what they have to do. But they are still going through a lot of stuff. And I'm like, how do we get the best out of people? Right. And so like I always try to take the motherly approach. I'm definitely mom to everybody too. You know what I'm saying? That's beautiful. So, I try to take that nurturing approach because it's like, first off, we're dealing with people who come from like backgrounds that have like, you know, we faced a lot of trauma, yes. especially coming from our community. So it's important to make sure that we're improving our inner, our inner workings. You know what I'm right, saying? And definitely. Then, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's tough because I know I'm going to get up every day. Right. So when you ask Rich, like, is, you know, is it easier to be the artist or the manager? It's like for him in one sense, it's like, he know he knew he was gonna get up for himself every day. Right. So when you're dealing with somebody else, you're like, okay, I hope they show up. I hope they do their part. Right. Right. And then when they don't, you got to troubleshoot. And so like we're constantly troubleshooting. We're constantly figuring out how do we improve on the design. Right. See, and what it can't she be just said, cutter. it can't be cookie cutter because everybody everybody's like different and they've been they're in different places. Right. Right. And it's like that's what I love about ten fifteen is like we give them more than just management. Beautiful. That's right. sick. Right. Right, because that's like, what's needed. Nah, real talk. Like, and what she said, that figuring it out part. Like, we still, we still figuring things out every day. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? And I think um, I did a post a couple weeks ago, and then Thizzler just reposted it, and a few people blasted me because they were talking about like Rich's advice is to tell artists to figure it out. Right, and like, and like they felt like that was harsh, and I understood mm-hmm. where they was coming from, but the context of what I was saying was even if I, even if I give you everything. If you don't figure it out and what you want for right. yourself, it don't matter what the hell I tell Straight you. Up. It don't matter what I what I produce for you. It don't matter who I introduce you to. Yep. You ain't going to be able to do nothing with it. You know what I'm saying? Because you still got to figure out what you're trying to do. But even more than that, though, too, is like if you are dependent and relying on everyone to get this done for you, bro, good luck. Because people going, you know, people got their lives. People got everything. Like we spent a lot of our, of our personal money to build up to where we at right now, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? You know we go, we gonna as a hustler, right. we gonna forever be in the red because right. we always reinvest it. Right. We gonna always put it back in. Right. This ain't no no cash grab for us. So right. 
That's why it's very important to figure it out. And when you do business with somebody, you need to be aligned and seasoned, right? So you mm-hmm. can understand what they expect of you and what you should expect of yourself. So it's a lot, man. It's man, a process. Giving up, they giving up a lot of game on the Wash Your Back podcast, yes, man. Yes, sir. Yes, it's sir. It's Phil Mo Mike in this thing. Uh, one thing I can say about you, Rich, uh-huh. is that you've always, mm-hmm. always been a leader. Right, right. <laughs> always been Thank a leader, you, man. I, I, I keep it real. Like like he said, we go back to the Dundee days. But even before then, right. Rich was – he's a hooper too, by the way. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> that quarter three is quarter deadly. Three. You exactly. heard my See, they be know. thinking I'm lying, bro. Nah, I'll, be, I'll be trying to tell my youngsters I used to have a little quarter say, three. Okay. Nah, for real. I believe in, I believe in Rich that. was the best basketball player <laughs> back in the day in our school. Yeah, Sutro. Sutro, yeah, Sutro and Elementary. Yep, real talk. <laughs> yep. Start out to Wong, Mr. Wong. Mr. Wong loves you, yeah, by the way. Yeah, he yes, be, man. He's telling me back in the day, he's like, man, what's what Big Rich up to? Right, right, right. I love Mr. Wong, Yeah, for real, for real. That's crazy. He always always been a leader when we was going back on the done deal days like okay it was done deal mm-hmm. and then rich had his little yeah, three he had story a, he had three <laughs> yeah. story he had yeah. his thing cracking for real for real uh he just always been a leader but i, I said that to say this um uh, when you were just talking about you just got to figure it out right it's like the wash your back podcast bro. like literally right, like right. you know what i'm saying people like man you should do a podcast yeah yep. and then you say to yourself okay I'm going to do it. But then when you don't do it, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you'll never figure it out. Mm-hmm. Never, ever. You feel never, me? So, ever. like, yep. slowly but surely, yep. you'll figure it out. Right. You just kind of, like, critique you your game and shit. Yeah, no, real talk. And I think sometimes when when um, when um the hardships come, people kind of, like, you know, they get they get disenchanted. I'm like, that's when you learn. You got to you gotta really, if you really dedicating yourself to this shit, yeah. you got, like, those those L's. You only learn from L's. You only you learn. You don't learn from the wins, bro. No. Like, the wins is just, it's you like a blur, bro. Them. You just forget. You're you like, for- all right, I'm winning. We're doing cool. Right. And you you kind of start preparing for your L, right? Because right. that's the only you time should you can, be. you, you yeah. should be. Because that's the only time you can really adjust and be like, oh, yeah, I did that wrong or this didn't happen or, yeah. you know, and, and, and that's what the figuring out process is. Right. And I think that, Sometimes it'd be this this fairy tale type of feeling, especially for a young artist. Like this shit look like a movie, and, and people make it look real easy on Instagram. Like Definitely. Instagram is the gift and the curse of that, right? Like it's like the access that you have to everyone is 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 crazy because it's like information overload. But when you got to really go out there in real life and figure this shit out, it's a whole different thing. So yeah, you got you got you got to go through the struggle, man. I embrace that. I right. love I love the hardships because we gonna we gonna learn from it and get better from that shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? Who who picked the who picked the San Francisco beat? All right. So yeah. So th- us, yeah. T- so this story. story. Yeah. I remember you I, told it, me it was this. funny too because Quinn um Quinn for a while we used to like we used to fight over it because Quinn's the bigger name. So the song went to Quinn in a way. Right. You know what I mean? Like right. just by just by because of fandom. But in reality though, um, tracks. Had sent me the beat. We had um, we had did a record. I think me and Balance was working on our group album. You know the Can't Go um, oh, song. Yeah. We did a group album and stuff, and then Tracks did a beat on there, and we we had a session with them. And after that, it was it, it was crazy. I, I like first of all, R.I.P. the Tracks. I, lo- I love my brother. Like for real, for real. I just seen um that when you had the yeah. thing on yeah about Fad. That right. shit touched me just because Tracks is a great dude, and I'm gonna double down on that. But we had did a session, mm-hmm. and he made this beat. He made the beat fast, but I wrote my verse even faster. And so, like, like we bonded over that. He was like, you already done? I'm like, well, I'm done. Like, let me get in the booth. And I went first on the song. And then he was like, bro, like, you you dope, bro. Like, he he, he didn't, you know, he, he he heard that's the business and stuff. Yeah. But he was just like, nah, you can really rap, bro. I'm like, man, I just be winging this shit, bro. Right. I'm not no rapper. You know what I mean? But, right. <laughs> but so we, uh, we hit it off on that. And then one day... He was playing around with that beat, and he sent it to me. It was really, it was like a skeleton when he first sent it. Mm-hmm. And um, me and Cannon, Cannon is out there right now, my little bro. Shout out we heard it. We played it at the house, and I was like, I don't know, man. I was like, what is this? Like coming after like Northern Cali and these gangster right. records and stuff. I was, gotcha. I was completely like, nah, I, I, I'm cool. He was like, well, I ain't sent it to Quinn and Mess yet. You feel me? I'm gonna send right. it to you first. I just want you to mess with it. And I'm like, all right, cool. And then I sent it to Chuck. And Chuck was like, it's cool. This is tight, man. Rap, rap on this. I'm like, I don't know, bro. I don't like I, I, I would not touch it for like like two, Chuck, three months. Chuck, Chuck didn't give you, that's crazy. Oh, of course, of course, of <laughs> course. He's bald head. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, oh, my God. And, he, and, and I was like, nah. It, I was saying all kind of all kind of negative shit about it at first. I was wow. like, I ain't doing it. I was like, nah. This, San Francisco? I was, like, I was like, this shit is soft. It's all kind of shit. I was like, nah, I'm cool. And then it, it didn't have hella elements on it, though. Got you. Tracks really went in there and finished and it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So um, I sent it to Chuck, and then he went and put Quinn and Boo on. He put Quinn and Boo on there first. And then, you know, like, 
they like, all right, nigga, they own it. If you ain't own it, we going to run with this. Right. I'm like, hell now. Nah. So on the intro, if you go back and listen, when I'm like, I apologize or I said hella little things in the, in the intro, I'm talking to Chuck and them because I was holding up the record. You know wow. what I'm saying? I was holding up the record. So I was like, I apologize, man. I know it took hella long. I was I'm, if, if, in the vocals. You can hear it. Uh-huh. And then um, me and DEO just sitting in the studio. Chuck, I don't know why. I was just arguing with Chuck the other day. He claimed that, that he took me to... um. He took me to a studio in South City to do the. I said, bro, I specifically recorded that at DEOs, but mm-hmm. me and DEO chilling at the at the, at the um at the studio over there on Cesar Chavez, mm-hmm. and I had to force that verse out. It took about 20, 30 minutes. So I forced it out. I wanted wow. it. I kind of. I was like, it, you it's, set that motherfucker off, right? And, and, and it was it was perfect <laughs> because I was like, if we gonna do this. I want it to be a, a like a, a easy recitable verse. You get what I'm trying to say? So. Really like dumbed down the flow and came with some like just some liners that people can chant and remember, and it worked out, bro. Man. We knocked it out and then sent it back. Trax was super excited. He put the um he put Ray on there, the, the female that was singing in the background, put her on it, sent it back. We we gave it to Vaughn. It went it went crazy. It went it from went crazy. It was like he played it one day, and then the next day it was number one on yeah. the on the six uh, seven, what, six o'clock six drop. Six o'clock drop. drop. Yeah. yeah. It went crazy, bro. It was, just, it was just on. It was on. But we was having legal issues and stuff with the I record. Know. Yeah, so we didn't get that figured out till we dropped the video about like six months after that. Got but, you. But it started right here in this building, though, for sure. Man, that's crazy, yeah. man. It's crazy, man. Crazy bro. story. Uh, yeah. Quick story about Chuck, if you didn't know. Mm-hmm. You know who gave him the name Street Cred? Who, you? Of course. Okay, see, I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know. I just remember I remember when, 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 when we shifted... And I and I signed over to him after the done deal thing. He was like, "It's gonna be street cred, street cred music yep. group." I was like, "That's hard." I'm yeah. like, "That's hard." I came up with okay, that because we was he was trying to do like a promo company. Got it. Got and it. And then I said, "I said, mm-hmm. how about we do street cred, right, for the He's, street team, for the street team." Yeah, yeah. And he was like, "Bro, you know what? I'm gonna have to use that." He called me one day. <laughs> he was like, "Bro, Filmo, I'm gonna ask you, bro. I should have got, some, I should have got right. some yeah, for you some money." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Because <laughs> he's, he's still Street Cred CEO, yeah, still right? Street to this day. CEO to this day, man. Right, right, for real. Uh, you mentioned the name. Uh, you mentioned, we're going to talk about Quinn. Right. But first, yeah. I remember you told me back in the day, mm-hmm. you really respected Messi Morph. Yeah, definitely. Can you tell me why? Because uh, like, at the time, I was kind of like, he, you feel yeah. me? I liked Mess. Yeah. But I was like, nah, but then you you kind of opened my eyes to him. Because, was like, nah, he tight, he bro. He tight, bro. And he, he was authentic to himself. You know, I, I know a lot of people criticized him about being a blood. and and But, like, he was he was ahead of the curve on a lot he of was, stuff, bro. bro. Like, he, like, nobody was blooding like that when he, he didn't he didn't follow a trend. That's why we was hella confused why he was a blood. Like, what are you doing? Like, <laughs> like first of all, I think at that time, Crips was dominating everything. Right. I'm like, if you gonna find something, but he just always did it his right. way, right. and um, and like throughout all the stuff, I know he had a lot of issues with Quinn, but he always will reach out to me like a DM or something like that, and be like, I always fuck with you, Rich, I love right. you. So we just had like a different kinmanship, but I just liked how authentic he was to himself, right? And and like like that 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 bled over to his fan base, and that's why you know even to this day he's such a like high level legend Man. from our city because. He was authentic to himself. Now everybody probably don't think it was, you know, he was authentic to Fillmore or to whatever it was, right. but to what he believed in, he didn't give a fuck, bro. Right. He did his thing. He did For his real. thing. He didn't, you know, he 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 I took care of a lot of people. My bad. But, oh no, man, no, go ahead. talk about that. Go yeah, ahead. My yeah, bad. No, he like he he discovered Definitely. a lot of talent. He he put a lot of people a lot in of position. People. Yeah, he did. And then, but he also he also knew when to to disappear and do it himself, and he never let anything get in between that. You know right. what I'm saying? So. I just, I just loved, I loved how he didn't give a fuck. He just right. did, he did what he felt like he needed to do. Nah, because it was like you told me something. He was like, man, you, I think you really from from afar. Right. I was be like, man, and I see how you used to move. Right, right. And I was like, man, like, cause mess always used to tell me like, bro, you gotta kind of fake it till you make it. Right, right, hundred percent. You feel me? You gotta make he it. He sold, bigger. he sold that vibe. Like he, he knew, man. bro. I swear to, you. and I, I definitely think. That's where we connected as well because it's like, look, we're gonna be bigger than life type vibe. You know what I mean? We want we want that real and I gra- I always gravitated to artists like that, like Rick Ross and and with Jeezy and them was doing. When I first heard them, I'm like, mm-hmm. see, this one this is what we own. Because at the end of the day, we have to th- this is entertainment, number one, but we live in such like one of the most realest regions, right? Like yes. street politics in the rap game is is it coexists a lot yeah, it's out so, here. It's so hard. I, I can't even ask ask some questions sometimes. Like, no, you know I'm just talk. gonna stay out the politics. Exactly. <laughs> it's a it's a lot of politics in the Bay Area, especially with the rap shit. And 
and we were able we were able to stay away from that because that's why we started Three Story. Like Three Story was a was a part of Filmo. It was, it's right. a, it's the it's the Banneker Homes yep. in Filmo. But it it was a different faction. We we didn't we didn't we not we wasn't going. We was always affiliated with all the bros. I'm Phil Mom. Yeah. I'm eight hundred, of course, up. just by that's where I'm from. But three story was a was a was an enterprise within these politics, and mm-hmm. we had we we did that to kind of shield from all of the bullshit, so it doesn't affect the business of what we're doing. Gotcha. Because I I just seen it early. I saw it. It was you know it was the um. The D boy era, where all the D boys was the CEOs of the record labels and all that type of stuff, mm-hmm. and and I was thirteen, the CEO, and I wasn't a big time D boy. I was, you know, I sold, I sold dope for my family. I was like, <laughs> it, it, you know, what I mean, I wasn't, I, I wasn't yeah. at that time. I I'm thirteen yeah, years nah, old. Real talk, no, real talk. So I was like, we gotta, we gotta establish something so we can survive through this, through this terrain and this environment. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. So that's what Three Story was like a a break off of the of the of the main piece of gotcha. Filmo, and um. And I think that's kind of like been our our secret sauce mm-hmm. across the board. Like we 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 affiliated. We're here. We got the swag. We got all of that type of stuff. But we're gonna start something different, right. and we're gonna build. And Project Level was different. That mm-hmm. and that like just just like with mess. Like everybody was like, man, what are you doing? Why right. are you quitting rap to go give back to the kids? And mm-hmm. we'll come volunteer for you, nigga. I don't know. You know what I mean? Like right. I'm like, bro, you think I'm finna? You know, you you think right. I'm finna walk away from this to go be broke and right. just no. <laughs> like, <laughs> It was it's a plan. It was yeah. a big. It was a bigger vision for it. You know what I'm saying? So, talk about uh, before we get. I'm gonna get you out of here, man. I know you got. No, no, no. It's here. just I, I'm on live still, and I just all. I, this is like the longest response I ever seen on. <laughs> it's like a paragraph somebody just wrote. <laughs> I'm gonna read it in a minute, bro. Yeah, it's straight yeah. up. <laughs> Tell us about uh, Quincy, Quincy Sam Brooks, Quinn, man. Quincy Brooks, man. Quincy Brooks was like the big brother I never had. You okay. know what I'm saying? Like Quinn, I learned. The good, the bad, the Man. great, the ugly. I learned everything from just watching Quinn. Cause it's like, you know, it's like to be able to work with like one of your idols and then and then he's your brother. Mm-hmm. And and like and it, it's it, it was crazy because like literally though, like like literally my idol. He wrote my first verse. I ever he, he gave me a name. It was uh-huh. called Dollar Bill. Okay. I was nine years old. He wrote my first verse. I used to remember it. I don't know it no more, but he been there from day one. Right. So then to become an iconic figure like he did. And I really, I really be getting hot when a lot of people be acting like Quinn wasn't him. Nah, like, for I be real. getting into arguments like yeah. in 2023 about yep. that. So just to deal with him, like I seen it all. Like he, he was, he was a, he was a, he you was a man right. child. You see the good with Quinn, you yeah. go experience the oh, good, the great, he, the awesome, the bad, the ugly. This he, like, he is damn. the most transparent human being I've ever met. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So that that was that was very important for a young man Beautiful. like me because I'm I'm able to soak up everything. You know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? And then it was like right before we all went solo. I had became like his hype man. And I remember you was his hype man yeah, too. Yeah. So I think right before that, I was doing, I did like about 20 shows with him. That's what's so up. it was getting me ready. You know right. what I'm saying? And he allowed me to do that. And it was like that kinmanship. And then when we did SF Anthem together, it was kind of like a cool thing because we had the MTV look already, right? Mm-hmm. So I was able to help him get get that MTV look. And that meant a lot for me. Like, thank you for everything you've done. Man. Now we got this record. Tuma and them is behind it. We finna be, you know what I mean? That's you know what I mean? Sick. We own and then hell yeah and everything else came with it. Oh, so time. it was cool. It was Talk cool. Talk about uh Bailey, Don Toriano, and Fully Loaded, man. Fully loaded. That's, Y'all that's, had the streets going crazy that, that, in 96, man, 97, 98. That's the foundation. That's where that's where we learned how to do everything that we're doing today. You know what I mean? Right. Toriano with Vegan Mob, everything. Like it's like we learned, we learned the business. And um we was brothers, bro. We was in the studio, 8, 9, 10, 12 hours, 24 hours. What a fucking hours. name, bro. Fully, fully loaded. loaded. You know what's yeah. crazy, though? <laughs> That's hard. At first, we was full-fledged. <laughs> okay, nah, No, no, first nah, of all, we was, no, hold on. Like no, first, <laughs> first of all, we was probably like 60 other names, right? Like 3D was all kind of shit. But we we started running with full-fledged. Mm-hmm. And then we um we was all, well, me and Bailey was at Wash at the time. And we had these full-fledged flyers or whatever. And it was a girl from West Point that went to our school and was like, Nigga, you niggas ain't full fledged, and we came to find out that that was the name of the West Point label. So how like okay. Harvard had Big Block, got you. It was full fledged records over okay. there. Okay, so you so couldn't use that name. We anyway. can use that. Right. Yeah, we can use that. So we definitely just took the full and added the fully, and then fully loaded, and it was uh. its own because it was like you know we was definitely on some lyrical warfare type shit. So it made sense. We fully loaded clip, and we just spitting. You know what I mean? So yeah. But it, yeah, it was every it was everything, man. Fully loaded. That shit like to be. To be seventeen and, and you in your you walking in high down, school, yeah, bro. you walking down the the hallway and then at this time, ra- yes, Sony radios radio, and shit, radio Raheem shit. So niggas playing your tape, it was tapes, no CDs, yep. it was tapes, and it was it was it was so amazing. So shit can be weak. Oh, yeah, <laughs> but, that's, but so fully loaded is how I found out about Rich. Got right. you. Right. My partner used to talk to Bailey, 
And so yeah. she had a poster you know, in her Bailey. room. <laughs> Man, I was gonna say who didn't know yeah, fucking exactly, exactly, exactly. Man, I'm fucking around. Right. So she had a poster in the room and I was like, Ooh, who is he with his gold ones? I was like, All right, like OG guy, I was great. on him. Yeah. I was on him and then little did I know, like yeah. It literally like we literally like three years later and yeah, we yeah. ended up together. Yeah. If y'all don't know, man, he talked about fashion. Rich is one of the flyest <laughs> niggas. Yeah. He always been fly. Thank you, you bro. Been, excuse my French. Yeah. Fly fat nigga, man. Yes, sir. You yeah. feel me? <laughs> this one thing he always said. He said, I, man, I'm gonna be fat, but I'm fly. I nigga. had yeah. to, bro. I couldn't. I couldn't go out sad, man. I had, man. To, I had to. I had to. I was man. I was a big nigga since birth, so I had right. to. I had to fashion it up, you know Straight what I mean? I had up. to accessorize it. But yeah, thank you though, bro. Nah, thank for you, real. Bro. Oh, real quick, before you get you out of here, mm-hmm. tell us about you went to Kansas City with Mac Dre. Mm-hmm. Yeah, bro. Bro, bless. Another another blessing. Um, shout out to Chuck. Shout out to Quinn. Real nigga shit on Quinn's side because this is when Quinn is coming off of explosive mode with mess. Oh, he's man. Making, he's, making oh a, man. he's 20 years old, a kid still, but he's like one of the biggest rappers on the West Coast. He's killing shit. And, um... It was it was before our first album was even done. We was working on Millennium Attitude mm-hmm. at the time, still in high school and shit. And um, they used to try to book Quinn, and like Quinn was getting a lot of money at that time. It right. ain't a lot now, but right. at that time it was a lot of money. Right. And Quinn used to be like, "Nah, don't pay me. Just just fly just fly all my young niggas out there." So me, what? Bailey, for yeah. So all of these shows that Quinn was, we did Denver, we did Kansas City, we did St. Louis, we did Can- we did all of these spots, and Quinn was taking no money. What the No fuck? money, just so we can go. Wow. So, that, so that, that's what I'm saying. Like, the good, the bad, everything with Quinn. Right. Like, he's a real nigga. He's a real man. Right. You know what I'm right. saying? Right. And, like, so he used to um he used to take, he used to, he used to take no money or, or extreme pay cuts so we can go. Wow. That's, and then we go out crazy. there. You're not, know, for real. Like, we went out there. But this one time, we went to Kansas City a lot. Kansas City was, like, a second home for a minute. Mm-hmm. But this one time, um we all got booked. Dre, everybody got booked. And then it was a heat wave out there. Okay. And, and. I don't know what it what happened, but we had to spend like a whole extra look. But I, I brought a weekend <laughs> worth of clothes to Kansas City. It was a heat wave. It's like 110 every day. Uh-huh. I had to stretch a weekend worth of clothes for like 10 days. Oh, and we man. and we camped out. Shout out to my boy P Dub and the whole um fuck, what was the name? It was a it was a record label out there, but they was like like they was like the little cousins to, to Rich the Factor. You know, okay. Rich the Factor Rich was the factor huge hard. at that time. Yeah. This was before Tech Nine even really started taking Got off you. out there. So Rich was like the big dog out there. But um this was this was a crew that was affiliated with Okay, them. got you. So they had this good Coolio the underdog set it all up. So we went out there and but like Dre, uh-huh. like we got to really like bond. Fuck, like you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like this before the dreads, this before all that. This is when rapper going bad it uh-huh. just came out. So we just was just vibing with him for a week. Amazing person, man. Like yeah. like it's like it's like Dre, like you know they always say the good die young and all these good man. things like bro. Dre was the coolest nigga in the world. And he loved us, bro. He fucked <laughs> with Toriano the most, yeah, though. He really fucked with Toriano tough. Right. I guess they was on that pimping shit, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But he really embraced us, took it under his wing, and like that whole 10 days, he had dip off from all the other niggas. There was a lot of people out there. Like uh-huh. like JT was out there with us at that time. Gotcha. Chuck, he'd just he'd be fucking with the young niggas. We'd just be catting off, you feel right. me? Like, it, it, it was great. Yeah, Dre was Dre was a cat though. But yeah, we was catting off with some females and stuff out there. But man, it was that fun. That sounds hella sick, bro. But Dre Dre was a good one. And, and then when I remember, um, he had a photo shoot. He invited us all out to the photo shoot he had did for um, Murder Dog, and that's when he announced his ENT. Okay. So so you know he was popping pills and shit out yeah. there, but we we didn't you know what I mean? But we right. when we when we met with him, we like nigga, what is this? Right. And he just started doing the T. He was like, nigga, and he just, you know, showed us a handful. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I'm like, okay. I'm like, I'm like, all right, Dre. I'm like, all right. right. And, then, and then we started seeing more transformations. Like, we um we did a show with him and Nicotina at um in Petaluma at the Phoenix Theater. Oh man. And then and then he started growing the dreads at that time. And he came out and like he he started doing the, the dance. He started he started doing all this shit. And we like, bro, what what happened? Like, you know right, what I mean? Like right. I swear to God, we wasn't wow. we weren't all the way bought into it at first. Cause we we knew another Dre. Mm-hmm. But he was like, nah, nigga, that's that superstar shit, nigga. He was like, ahead of his time. Ahead of he was like, nigga, I'm gonna show you niggas how to be a superstar. And we like, that's real. And we right. just we fell in love with it, bro. And and now it's a He's a genius, bro, right? You know what I'm saying? I swear to God, I was watching Trill TV, and yeah. I was like, that's yeah. what I, I got. I was, I was thinking, like, mm-hmm. this nigga, yeah. he's, he's so captivated. He was bro, like, bro. Yeah, he was doing yeah, all this bro. shit, but he was Energy like, was it crazy. was clear, though. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't yeah. like goofy, like, uh, yeah. Yeah. It yeah. was like, it was goofy, yeah. but it was cl- a clear it was, message. Yeah, it was yeah. so, <laughs> man, he was so ahead of his time. And, and like, I remember even down to the end, um, we were supposed, the trip that he did in Kansas City was a big Bay Area trip. 
a lot of Bay Area artists and stuff went, and we were supposed to go on that trip. And we was excited. We like Kansas City second home. You right. know what I'm saying? Like we were super juiced. And then something happened with the scheduling, and Quinn couldn't go. So of course, if Quinn wasn't going, we wasn't going. Right. So um, we was with them in the studio at um, Sound Waves over in West Oakland mm-hmm. about a week before the show, and he he got me and Toriano on a song. It was the Thiz Nation. You know how he did the whole Thiz Nation? They they took off and did like 30, 40 of them. We was on the first one. Me and Toriano was on Thiz Nation Volume 1. Okay. So he came and got us on that record, and we chilled, and we just talked and caught up with everything. Because at this time, he's he's Mac Dre. He's taking, he's he's all the way there. For sure. So we chopped it up, and we was like, we'll see you in Kansas City. That was the last thing we said to him, and we didn't make it. And the crazy shit happened. You know what I mean? That shit was devastating. Rest in peace to Mac. Mac D-R-E. For real, So, man... We wrapping it up, man. I just want to thank you, man. Thank you, Danielle, for coming. Definitely. For definitely. real, for real. Let them know that you're taking talent. Mm-hmm. So, like, yep. real quick before I let you go. Yeah. Last question. I no swear. problem. No problem, bro. Who who could who could say, hey, man, I'm, I, I do this. Right. Can anybody, do you have to be an artist, a rapper? You know what I'm saying? Can you manage me? You know what I'm saying? Right. I'm going I'm to let, let, <laughs> let her, because she usually, she usually do you that process. In yeah. a position. She, no, I'm she usually do that, but... But that's what, like, even when we leave in here, what we'll be doing tonight at Providence with, uh, know, with, with Butter and Mills and, of course, G. Val. He over there, though. He didn't want to come in the room tonight. But um, we're going to do this industry night once a month. You know, and this is what we grew up doing. Yep. This is what mm-hmm. y'all used to do and this station used to do and all that type of stuff. So we want to bring that back, you know what I mean, and, 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 and put the... um. Cause we also we also manage you know that's some of the saying. biggest DJs. You manage, you manage DJs, yeah, not just yeah. artists. Yeah. yeah, So it's like we got we have like shout out to Butter Mills, Shellheart, um, um, Drew Banger, Slim, Slim, Slim. and DJ Clo Money. Yeah. Like yeah. they 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 got the nightlife going crazy in Oakland, right? Stupid. So so we um we're teaming up with them to 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 do an industry night, and this is allowing all of the DMs and the uh-huh. text messages and that we haven't gotten back to and didn't have time to for them to come just probably with us in, in person, you know That's what I mean? Beautiful. And like. And even if they ain't just talking directly to us, it's just gonna be people it's in the people room. In there. And yeah, exactly. cause cause, cause at the end of, yeah, no, for real. So if you wanna jump into how do we sign artists? Yeah. Um, first off, it's like we we read every DM, like on the ten fifteen page, we read it. We go check the artists out. Like if you say, Hey, I do this or I'm a model, right. I'm a writer, I'm an actor, mm-hmm. I'm a public speaker, you right. know, like filmmakers, like we're not opposed to working with just a specific, like just one, you know, one group. We're open to everything mm-hmm. right. because we like talent is talent. If you have right. a gift and you you just need some support, like that's what we're here for. And I'm like, I, I always say, like, it's our duty to like see who's like see what Definitely. somebody's talking about. Yeah. But I'm gonna look at your page, and if you have less than. I be telling posts. people that, yeah. I'm not. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to even the, look anymore. I mean, like, I'm gonna listen if the song is not available right there. Then I'm I'm done. Right. Because how are you telling mm-hmm. me you're an artist, but I don't see it in the first yeah. f- first couple yeah. of posts, right. especially with the pin post. So now you could put your top song there, right. right? Right. Or you could put your top picture, whatever it is that you do. Like it should be visible in the first six. Facts. And if I don't Straight see no up. links in the bio, if your page is private. You you kind of lose your opportunity. You better send me pictures or something. You got to yeah. do something for me to see it. We gonna click but, that, right? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, for you got sure. you, you got to. It has to be visible and it has to be obvious. Like, don't make me guess, and then don't make me go look for your music. Like, right, right. And that's doing too much because already you already got my attention. And don't so be pump it. faking and selling wolf tickets. Talking about you hot. Right, right. right. man. I right. go to your YouTube and then you yeah. only got a, less than a yeah. hundred views. Oh yeah, yeah. but you so like been out a hundred. People years. have like a hundred thousand plus <laughs> followers, but I go look can show comments yeah, right real talk. Your comments and likes ain't li- uh, adding up then i don't believe yeah. you and like we don't need to lie i don't you don't have to have a, like thousands and thousands of followers but if you got consistency mm-hmm. if you if you putting yourself out there and you got the you got the package we we gonna talk to you we gonna at least listen or try to have a conversation we're not gonna take everybody but right but we also are open to like just giving advice. Like that's the project level, and that's where we want to support people. Mm-hmm. We might not be on the same. T- we might not like add you to the roster, but right, yeah. we, we're down to like. We're gonna advice. definitely help you though. Yeah. We, yeah, we give you advice, and then just being in it for so long, mm-hmm. it's like you didn't seen every characteristic mm-hmm. possible. It seemed like right, so we able to kind of like we can tell out the right. game. Like yeah. it's, it's, it's 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 some flaws here. That's not like we're not gonna judge you because of those flaws, right. mm-hmm. but it might interfere with your progress right. and it's something that we can't invest in because like the thing about us too and even our lawyers is like mad at us because we do this too much but as a management company 
we invest in our artists a lot more. There ain't man like a lot of managers don't invest what we invest, right? Right. right. It's not even just time and resources, but actual right. like monetize my money, you know, fi finances and stuff. So like to put our money behind you, we yeah, really got to. You know, that's different. So, right. so we yeah we we look at it real real many, but we still here to help. If you, if you got some traction, you got some going. You deserve that helping hand, right? Because you earned that. Mm -hmm. But with artists like, yo, it's no excuse at this point. You can mm -hmm. get popping out here, bro. We got the internet. You know, mm -hmm. we didn't right. have that. So right. you got the internet. P get popping. And then, you know, and then we can do something. You like you like it now or you liked it when you was coming up? When you had to kind of have to I, like, I wouldn't trade hustle. our experiences for nothing. I, 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 feel, yeah. I feel like I feel like we learned. We had to learn. Like, we was like blind and we had to, we had to figure out the world with, with out. no vision, right? We had to just get through it and figure yeah. it out. And and now it's like now we we're, we know how to properly use these tools that just didn't exist, right? right? So it's great, it's great. Like going from having to figure it out to now you got this support and this Little help, blueprint, we can right. we can do some crazy stuff. Yeah, yeah. and then if you want to give them a pointer, just tell them to wash their back. Mm -hmm. Yes, <laughs> yeah, you're not washing your back. Hygiene is very important. What did you yes. do? You yes. can't be a mogul. You can't get on ten Hell, fifteen. Nah. Definitely can't we're be not playing model. you in Cam no, right. so <laughs> get a back. No, I'm joking. Go wash your damn back. Yeah, wash your back, the back of your neck, the back of your kneecap. <laughs> Shout out to Big Rich and Dan Yeo, man. Yeah. Thank y'all for having. I mean, thank y'all for being on thank this podcast. Thank you for having us, bro. Thank you for uh, you know, rocking with you, bro. I love you, Rich. Love you too, love you, Dan. Yeah, I appreciate all, uh, you. Love you. Thank you so Michelle much. Michelle Lee. Yes. Shout out to the twins, too. Yes, sir. Montel. The little, little Telly Tellies, Mac. Yeah, the Telly Mac twins. Yeah. Taylor, Taylor, Taylor and Tyler. Tyler. Yeah, they'd yeah. be mad. Like, we're not just little Telly Max. We hate Taylor and Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, nah. They, 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 they do their thing. They, they, they got are commercials doing their thing, yeah, bro. They, they are doing their thing. thing. And they growing up right in front of our eyes and mm -hmm. they blossoming and developing just like it's crazy. Just watching They in the club now? They yeah. be with us. They, they be with us. Okay. They, they kind of like introverts, yeah. though. So they don't, they'll come but they out for real, us. But no, they yeah. real good young ladies. Like, yeah, they, they definitely. Mind they've been definitely. college graduates. They, they do wow, their thing. Wow, that's yeah, what's they, up. They, they yeah. do their thing. That's bro. what's right. up. Hell Thank yeah. you again, my brother. Thank you, yeah. My bro. sister, yes.